The fifth episode of The Boys season 4 was essentially divided into three storylines. The first one was taking place at a Comic-Con-like event where Watt was unveiling the upcoming slate of movies and TV shows. Adrian was trying to throw Sister Sage off the scent since she had figured out that he was responsible for the leak about the deaths of the Homelander fans. Homelander was turning Ryan into a villain under the garb of making him a hero, and it all ended with the death of Cameron Coleman after Ashley managed to frame him for the aforementioned leak. The second one was centered around the Campbell family, where Huey and Daphne dealt with the repercussions of injecting Hugh with Compound V, which eventually led to his death. The third one took place at Newman's farmhouse, where a mishap gave superpowers to the animals present there. The last vial of the soup-killing virus manufactured at Godolkin University was used to kill the animals. Annie, Kimiko and M.M. went back home, dejected that they didn't have the poison that could kill Homelander. Frenchie got himself arrested, and Newman rescued Stan Edgar when he was being taken back to jail. Butcher faked Samir's death and abducted him so that he could make more of the soup-killing virus. The sixth episode largely takes place at a freaky party at Tech Knight's mansion, and elsewhere, there's a startling revelation waiting for Butcher. So let's get into it. A spoiler warning is in order as we will be discussing essential plot points and character details from the show. But if you've watched episode 6 already, let's dive straight into it. And while you're at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel as it helps us a lot. The boys infiltrate Tech Knight's party. Episode 6 of The Boys Season 4 opens with Huey, Daphne, Annie, MM and Kimiko going on the Made in Manhattan tourist attraction to remember Hugh. An anti-Starlight heckler tries to harass Annie, but Huey stands up for her. Kimiko tries to meet Frenchie in jail, but he refuses to meet her. Firecracker replaces Cameron Coleman and does an anti-Semitic news spot, which is something that the writers have probably concocted to distract viewers from the fact that there are Zionists in the cast. So Adrian calls M.M. from Toronto to tell him that Homelander is planning to create a soup army and take over America. He's going to table this plan at a party that Tech Knight's throwing, which will be attended by bureaucrats and politicians. Butcher would usually be the guy getting them into this party, but since he is engaged elsewhere, M.M. has to get in touch with Web Weaver to do the same. Spider-Man fans will either be laughing their heads off or fuming at this parody of the web slinger who shoots webs out of his butt. There's a moment in Sam Raimi's Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness where America Chavez gets confused after hearing the term Spider-Man and thinks that, like a real spider, Spider-Man shoots Webb out of his butt. Coming back to the plot, M.M. incapacitates Webb Weaver by injecting Rohypnol into his system and then steals his costume so that Huey can wear it and get into the party. The focus then shifts to the party itself, and in addition to the bureaucrats and politicians, Homelander, Ryan, Newman, A-Train, Firecracker, Ashley, and Sister Sage are there too, as guests. Huey finds himself in a tight spot with Tech Knight. Tech Knight thinks that he is going to team up with Homelander, but Homelander tells him to keep his expectations in check. When Firecracker tries to butter up Tech Knight, he starts talking about his family's racist past while shamelessly poking at A-Train. Meanwhile, Huey puts on Webweaver's smelly costume and walks into the party with the intention of planting bugs all over the mansion. That will allow M.M. to get all the proof that he needs to blame Sister Sage and Homelander for planning a coup. Additionally, Huey is tasked with getting Tech Knight to a secluded place so that M.M. Annie and Kimiko can pose him to reveal any additional information he has on Sage and Homelander. We briefly see Sage and Homelander urging Newman to out herself as a soup so that it strengthens their political position. And then the focus goes back to Huey finding out that Web Weaver actually has sexual relations with Tech Knight. I'm not going to go into the details of what goes down between them, but it seems like the character of Tech Knight is a messed up parody of Batman because they have hidden lairs, butlers who have taken care of them since they were kids, and both of their superpowers are money and observational skills. We get a cameo from Latio, Tech Knight's sidekick, who apparently lives in the Tech Cave as his prisoner because he betrayed Tech Knight. Is Tech Knight dead or alive? Annie starts to panic because Huey is in a bit of a pickle as he is being forced to do the most unimaginable things by Tech Knight and Ashley. So she urges M.M. and Kimiko to come with her to rescue Huey instead of waiting for him to get the jump on Tech Knight. M.M. and Kimiko realize the gravity of the situation and agree to infiltrate the mansion. But before they can get to him, Tech Knight discovers that it's actually Huey who is pretending to be Web Weaver, and he intends to present him to Homelander as a trophy kill so that he gets into his good books. M.M. and Kimiko reach the library through which the tech cave can be accessed and find Sister Sage sitting there. She tries to raise an alarm, but M.M. shoots her in the head, 
thereby seemingly killing her. This causes MM to suffer a heart attack and he collapses. Kimiko gets a hold of A-Train and asks him to take MM to the hospital. And after some initial hesitation, A-Train helps MM out. Annie reunites with Kimiko and goes to save Huey. Ironically, the book that opens the entrance to the tech cave is The 120 Days of Sodom by Marquis de Sade. There's a movie based on that book. It's called Salo or The 120 Days of Sodom. It's a feel-good film and you should definitely watch it. For all intents and purposes, this is a joke. Anyway, Annie and Kimiko tie up Tech Knight and try to torture the details of his conversations with Sister Sage out of him. Since Tech Knight is a masochist, it doesn't work on him. Ladio frees himself and shows that the only way to truly torture Tech Knight is by dangling the threat of emptying his bank accounts. Finally, Tech Knight reveals that he has concentration camps built across the country, and Homelander wants to use them to imprison dissenters. By the time everyone can process the information, Tech Knight's butler, Elia, appears out of nowhere and promises to strangle Tech Knight to death while making it look like a suicide. Ladio hangs back to help Elia, and Huey, Kimiko, and Annie leave with all the information they've got on Tech Knight. We get another Spider Man joke as Elia reveals Tech Knight's safe word to be Zendaya, the actress who has starred in all the MCU Spider Man films. We don't see Tech Knight's death. And the golden rule of television is that if you don't see someone dying on screen, we can't assume that they are dead. Off screen deaths don't count. However, since Elia and Ladio have suffered so much from Tech Knight's debauchery, we can hope that they'll see it that Tech Knight doesn't see the light of day ever again. At the hospital, MM finds out that he's had a panic attack and not a heart attack. That said, the doctor tells him to take some downtime because he is failing to deal with the stress of his job. Kimiko tries to meet Frenchie again, but apparently, Frenchie is still not ready to face Kimiko. At the boys' headquarters, Huey breaks down in front of Annie because the one-two punch of Hugh's death and everything that he has endured in the tech cave have taken a toll on him. By the way, amidst all this chaos, it's revealed that Sister Sage didn't die despite getting shot in the head. Will Firecracker replace Sister Sage? Newman seems to be having a hard time listening to the bureaucrats blabber on. So Sister Sage tells her why she wants to rule over humans. She says that, at a very young age, she could have found the cure for cancer and saved his grandmother. But the human doctors refused to listen to her and laughed at her. So she had to watch her grandmother writhe in pain and then die. From that day onward, Sister Sage decided to rule over the humans instead of helping them. And she wants Newman to see the world from her perspective. Firecracker tries to enter the conversation going on between Newman, Homelander and Sister Sage. But Sister Sage tells her to stay within her limits because she isn't intellectually developed enough to be among them. Since Firecracker runs to Annie, she gets incapacitated by her. Sister Sage joins Homelander, Newman and the bureaucrats for the meeting, and it's revealed that since Sage's brain is regenerating, she isn't functioning in an intelligent fashion. So Homelander decides to lead the conversation all by himself. Since Homelander is an idiot and he doesn't know how a country runs, his argument for turning America into a full-on fascist state crumbles instantly. Newman steps in to save the day with a speech, where she presents the masses as animals who don't deserve basic rights and should be ruled by the soups. Thankfully, all this is recorded on the devices planted by Huey. The scene then shifts to the Vought Tower, where Firecracker reveals that she has been taking Galactococcus to produce breast milk without getting pregnant. We all know that Homelander is a huge fan of breast milk, and since Firecracker has gone to such great lengths to satiate his desires, it looks like after Sister Sage's massive debacle, Firecracker is going to become Homelander's most trusted aide. Is Kessler a figment of Butcher's imagination? Samir finds himself chained inside an abandoned warehouse that has been turned into a chemistry lab by Butcher, so that he can use his wits and expertise to cook up some more of that soup-killing virus. And Butcher gives Samir a week to make it work. That said, he doesn't let Samir know that he is suffering from a severe case of worms in the body. He goes into a little room upstairs and cuffs up some kind of black liquid while talking to the version of Becca that only exists in his mind. Surprisingly enough, the hallucinated version of Becca tells Butcher that he is going down a dark path if he thinks that unleashing a virus is going to solve everything. Butcher justifies his actions by saying that what he is doing is for the greater good. Soon after that, Kessler appears to check up on him and starts talking about how normal life didn't suit him after he returned from the war. He says that he was pretending to be a good guy, but he actually wanted to torture people and make them scream. He uses this personal anecdote to coax Butcher into unlocking his violent side. At the end of The Boys Season 4 Episode 6, 
Butcher delivers the basic stuff that Samir needs to make a new batch of the soup killing virus. Samir reiterates something that we already heard in Gen P. Making the virus stronger means that it'll become airborne. Becca's ghost tells Butcher not to go ahead with this plan, while Kessler keeps telling Butcher to stick to the plan because their ultimate goal is to kill all soups. When the noise gets too loud for Butcher to handle, Kessler tells Becca to shut up. And that's how it's revealed that Kessler doesn't actually exist. It's a Fight Club-like situation where Butcher has conjured Kessler to keep himself motivated. Yes, Kessler used to be a real person, but he died during the military operation that he keeps referring to. Butcher didn't save Kessler, and he has been imagining his contribution to the fight against the soups all this time, when in reality, he has been talking to himself and doing all the work that he thinks Kessler has been doing for him. Kessler says that he is the one who killed Ezekiel, so it's possible that he is the byproduct of the concoction of compound V and temp V that's coursing through Butcher's body. Butcher is understandably shocked by this revelation, but it's unclear if he is going to embrace this part of his psyche or reject it. We'll have to wait to see what happens to Butcher. It's a decent twist, but I guess the section of the boys' fans who also happen to be Supernatural fans will probably be a little disappointed because they won't get to see Jeffrey Dean Morgan interact with Jensen Ackles, Jim Beaver, or Jared Padalecki. By the way, Kessler is a real character in the comics and not just a figment of Butcher's imagination. So I guess fans of the comics are going to be taken aback by this plot twist. What are your thoughts on Kessler being an alter ego of Butcher? Let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching this video and hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinema and series. See you in the next one and for the time being we're signing off. Bye!